Hello and welcome back to my channel if you're a returning visitor and welcome, welcome if you are a new visitor. This is Spooky Stitches, a knitting podcast that is 50% wool and 50% ectoplasm. And my name is Sheena Peril. I'm an author and knitwear designer from the Pacific Northwest. You can find links to my books and everything that I talk about down in the description bar below. Some of those links might be Amazon affiliate links, which means that I get a couple cents if you purchase something, but it doesn't cost you anything. So if you're new here, and I know that there are a lot of new subscribers here, um, about once a month I do one of these podcasts where I show you some of my knitting projects, what I've been working on. We also talk about what I've been reading. Um, and then I'll also give you some news and updates at the end where we talk about what I'm working on in my writing career, anything that's been recently released or is about to be released. And then we usually wrap up with some kind of a spooky story. However, I'm not sure if we're going to have time for that this week. I do try and keep these podcasts on the shorter side, usually around 30 minutes, just because if it's longer than that, my computer has difficulty uploading it. So we're going to try and stick as close to that 30 minute mark as we can. So to start things off, why don't we do a card pull? So this is a deck that I got for Christmas from my in-laws. And this is the uh, Cats Rule the Earth Tarot. <laughs> because I have a type. Um, I have five cats for those of you that don't know. Um... I love my cats. I also love dogs and just like animals in general, but right now I have five fluffy weirdos that might be cats or science experiments gone wrong. We're not sure, especially with the black and white one behind me here. Yes, squid, that would be you. So let me get this out of the way and we will do a quick shuffle and card pull real quick. Okay, so the card that came out was the Three of Pentacles. I happen to love this card because I love my tuxedo cats, even though they are absolute chaos and troublemakers. Um, but let me read what it says in the book about this card. So the Three of Pentacles is acknowledgement, mastery, and application. Some success has been achieved. This is enjoyable, but ultimately it's not enough to fulfill you. You need to keep on working. Teamwork is indicated and may help. Teamwork is indicated and help may be coming from a mentor or associate. This card denotes a skill in a trade or artistic ability that brings financial reward that brings financial rewards and honor. So that was our card for this week. I hope you that kind of gave you a little bit of guidance. Um, I like using tarot when I'm feeling a little bit lost or confused. And let me tell you, 2024 has been, there is no roadmap for this. Um, there's not even a gas station ask for directions. So we're making it work. So let's get into my finished objects and let me, let me put the lapel mic on my actual lapel and I will try not to bump the cord too much. Um, I've noticed that this particular mic, if I move around too much, it tends to have a lot of background noise. However, there is a lot of airplane noise out today. Um, we're also in the middle of another heat wave. So fans and stuff, I'm trying to lessen the background noise as much as possible. Okay, so hopefully you can still hear me and the cord isn't giving too much rustling noise. Um, so the first thing that I completed in the last month since my last uh, podcast was I made a book strap. Now, about two weeks ago, I posted a video about reorganizing my planners and my notebooks and breaking up some of my like pens and stationery supplies to match with the specific books that I use them with. So... This one is actually for my writing notebooks and I cannot reach the other one right now, but I have two of these Happy Planner Big that I use in my writing. This is the one where I have story notes. I've got another one where I have like my writing business stuff. And then this is the pen pouch that goes with it. 
So what I did was I made this book strap. And it's a little bit loose because it's intended to go around both notebooks at the same time. And then it holds my pen pouch with it so everything stays together. And I got something similar from Daiso, which is a Japanese dollar store near us. And these are just elastic with Velcro sewn on them, but they didn't have any big enough for the large happy planners. And the thought of sewing Velcro onto elastic made the seamstress and me just want to die. So I knit one. Um, and it's great. It is just garter stitch. It's two fingering weight scraps that I had held together. Um, I don't remember what size needle I used, but it's just garter stitch. And then I slipped the first stitch on each row to give it that nice border and help keep the stretch from just going totally out of control. So it has some elasticity, but it's not going to like totally stretch out over time. And I don't remember what yarns I used for this. Like I said, this was just leftovers. Um, actually, I th okay, so the pink I think is actually either a DK or a sport weight. It's the center from one of my uh, rainbow spools, or not spools, um, the balls of, uh, mandala that I've been using for the rainbow sweater. I'll show that to you in a minute. So the pink is the mandala and then the aqua is from a DK weight that was left over but I don't remember the company or the color or anything. Um, this is from a while ago and then the purple that I held double with all throughout that is a tweed yarn that I got in a a bag from the thrift store of just a, a bunch of fingering weight yarn. I have no idea what company it is. It didn't have a tag on it. Um, but I think that the purple made a nice contrast, kind of blends everything together, and then it has these bright pops from the tweed bits. Okay, so the second thing that I finished is an item from last episode, which is my largest shawl. This is just a basic triangle shawl recipe that I got off of Ravelry. Um, the one that I use is the Reina shawl, which is a free download. Um, and I've adapted it. So what I do is I start with five stitches instead of three. I don't do a garter tab. And then I just go directly into the increases for the triangle. And then, um, so this is reclaimed yarn. I don't know what it is. I don't know how many yards I had, nothing like that. Uh, this one with the metallic in it is mill ends. Um, it was originally part of a sweater that I made a couple of years ago and I didn't like it. I couldn't wear it against my skin. So I took it out, um, and reused the yarn for this. Um, but it's mostly wool. And then the solid blue is mostly cotton, which I got when I ran out of this on the sweater. Um, but I just, I took the sweater out, reused the yarn, and this is going to get donated to our largest bin for my SCA group. Because while I enjoyed making it, while I wanted to use the yarn, wanted to have a finished object that would work out of it. Um, it's just not something that I can wear. I have very sensitive skin. And one of the reasons why I don't experiment too much with yarn brands is because when I'm ordering online, if I can't feel the texture, I can't guarantee that I can wear it. So I like to order familiar yarns when I'm ordering online. That means ordering a lot of nitpicks. Um, but this is all just garter stitch. It was very easy. It was a great project when I just, I have had zero brain for a large portion of this summer. And so this has been a good project to work on. Okay, so let's look 
at the stuff that I'm currently working on. Um, I've been making some small items for my shop, but I don't want to show those on video today. I'm going to wait until closer to the shop update, which my next shop update is going to be sometime either late September or early October. If you want to know when that is where you can find everything, check the links down below. I do have a mailing list that I send out once a month that will have the date on it. Um, my mailing list goes out usually on the 15th. So September 15th, you will find out the dates for my next shop update. Okay, so the one that has been getting most of my attention this week has been this top. This is not from a pattern. I'm calling this my tiki top. Um, I intended it to be a tank top. It might end up being more like a vest that I wear over shirts in the office. So, hair all over this. Um, so this is two yarns held double throughout. Um, in this top portion, down to about here, <clears throat> um, the solid coral is Cloudborne Fibers Cotton DK, Pima Cotton DK, sorry, um, in the colorway coral. And I held that double with Knit Picks Chroma fingering in the colorway Tiki, which is where I got the name for this top. Um, now, I only had one skein of the Pima Cotton. However, the color match is almost spot on for this ball of Knit Picks per Precocia. I'm not sure the pronunciation on this. Um, this is a single singles yarn fingering weight um, I believe it's 100% wool and it's a tonal but it's pretty much a spot-on dupe for the coloring of the Pima so I knew that I wanted to use this the Pima and the Tiki together and I thought that the Tiki would work really well held double with them and it has. I really like the color progression on this. Um, holding multiple yarns means that it is comfortable enough to wear against my skin. Um, but like I said, I think it's turning out a little bit too heavy for that and it'll probably end up be being an office vest. Um, what else can I say about this? Uh, I did not use a pattern. As a lot of you know, um, I don't use a lot of patterns. Um, this is partially because I'm broke. This is also because I'm lazy and I, I don't want to read patterns. Um, one thing with my ADHD and my dyslexia is that it makes it hard for me to actually sit down and read knitting patterns because my eyes just want to go all over the page and something like, you know, CO3, uh, YO, whatever, like all of the abbreviations make it very hard for my brain to follow because it's trying to translate as I'm working. So I don't like using them. It's very easy for me to skip lines and transpose numbers because my particular flavor of dyslexia impacts numbers more than it does words or letters. So I just start, started with the straps in the back, knit down to the front, increased a little bit, picked up stitches for the neckline, and then under the arms, and then joined in the back. I like to use a couple inches of ribbing at the top back to help with the shaping and holding things in place. And this is just a very basic square neck top. I'm going to, um, I'm almost done with the ribbing at the bottom. I think I have maybe eight more rounds to go and then I'm going to pick up and do ribbing for the neckline and the sleeves or the armhole openings. Um, but this I'm hoping to finish up this weekend. Today is Saturday. I don't know if I'll actually get it done by Monday, but I can hope I can try. I don't have an actual deadline for this. Um, because I'm not working right now, but it's just something that would gratify me if I could get it done in a couple of days. 
And this is, I'm using my Chaogu uh, US 7 4.5 millimeter needles for these in circular. My other main project this week has been another tank top, although right now it just kind of looks like a mess because I've only just joined for the body. So yeah, this is a tangled mess right now. This one is more racerback style with a v-neck and I did mostly garter for the straps. It's got a little thin band of stockinette running down the center and then I'm on that ribbing that I do around the back. And this one is done in stripes. I started out doing this one the same way with the yarns held together, but I was afraid I was going to run out of one of them halfway through. And um, it was also just coming out way too dense for what I wanted. Um, I do not know what these yarns are. Um, I can tell you that the darker, more solid stripes are Teresa Roosh Designs, and it is a Tencel, but I don't think the colorway has a name or a number or anything to it. And then the other one is a sock yarn that I wound up several months ago and then lost the tag for, so I'm not sure really what either of these are. But I thought that they looked good together. They're giving me a good drape. And I think that this will be a good summer top that I can wear over a sports bra. Um, kind of like the pink and black tank that I made. Was it last summer or the summer before? It was right around the time I started doing spooky stitches. But more of like a lightweight yoga top type of fit. So the other thing that I've been working on just a little bit is the rainbow sweater. It's just been too hot for me to have that big top or that big sweater, which is basically an afghan with sleeves sitting on my lap. So I haven't worked on it a ton. This is the sleeve I've been working on. And I think the last time I showed it, I was like down here. So I've made a, a bit of progress. Um, I have one more color after this on the sleeve, I think, um, which will become the cuff. So my cuffs are probably going to be like either this transition-y coral color or they're going to be going into that orange. Um, but this is all I've been working on. The other thing is these are Leica wooden needles and I like the Leica needles. These are their fixed circulars because they were the only ones I could find in the size for this. And I'm just, I don't like using acrylic yarn with wood needles. I only use them with metal usually, but I couldn't find metal needles in the right size at the time. And I don't want to mess up my gauge. So acrylic yarn on wood needles, especially in the summer, in the heat, in the humidity, it squeaks. I can't stand the sound. I don't like the way it feels on my hands because I can feel that vibration every, t every time it squeaks. I absolutely can't stand it. So I haven't been working on this one very much. I've been trying to do a couple rows every day just to try and make some progress on it, but it's just been really hard to work on lately. Um, so let's talk shop update. I did just have one on my Kofi shop, link down below. Um, I added additional ebooks. I have more coming. Um, I'm working on some, like covers and formatting and stuff on my existing files. I'm updating them. Some of my books are a little bit older, so I'm making sure that all the back matter is current, all the front matter is current, all of that stuff. So those are going to be part of the September October update. But I'm going to include a like screen recording here so that way you can see what all I'm talking about. So new items that I have in shop. I've got a couple of uh, shawls that I've made in the past are up there. I have a whole bunch of de-stash yarns. Um, I think I have a total of six de-stash listings. Some of them are for multiple skeins. Um, 
I've also added two more eBooks. Um, one of them, there's also a paperback option. Uh, actually, no, two of them, I have paperback options available. Um, I've got some hand knit items, bandanas, socks. I've also got stitch markers up and there's a couple of custom options. So if you do not knit, but you want hand knit socks, or if you are a knitter and you need help making gifts for this holiday season, um, go ahead and contact me. I have several options available. This is kind of in like beta testing mode. So if you have suggestions or something that you want that fits that category, but is maybe a little bit off book, let me know and I will see what we can work out. Um, but I've got a whole bunch of new stuff in there. I have more that I'm going to be adding. I want to add more planners, but I'm, I'm debating on that. I'm not a graphic designer. Um, I've been using uh, Microsoft Publish to create them. Um, I'm thinking about switching over to Canva, but then I'm using like their graphics. Um, anyway, it, it's just things that I need to think about and I don't have a current, uh, like niche that I'm aiming for on those. So if you have something that you would like to see in the future, always let me know about that and I would be happy to accommodate. One piece of good news that I've been having in the last month or so is since I had my big medication change in the beginning of July, I've been able to read again. I have not been able to read in probably four years because I've just been like too tired. I sit down with a book and I immediately fall asleep or I can't concentrate on it. Um, my attention span for reading for enjoyment has just been absolutely zero. Um, so I went and I have several books that have been on my TBR for a long time. I've got a whole TBR video that's going to be out, I think either next week or the week after. And I went through and I'll go into this more in that video, but I made a list of the TBR, TBR books that I want to read broke them into sections on when I wanted to finish them, started tracking my reading on a daily basis to see what kind of progress I was making, and then promptly ignored the schedule that I had given myself. So as you can see, the, the July section, I finished a book that was on my list. I have finished three books since then. Uh, however, um, none of them were in the July section. So um, the books that I finished were Siege and Storm, The Splendid and the Vile, and The Dark Days Club. So Siege and Storm is the second um, Lee Bardugo Shadow and Bone series book. I really enjoyed it. I was just, I was struggling so hard to read. I started this book in November, and when I picked it up again in the beginning of July, I had read four chapters. That is how bad it's been. So I sat down, finished the book. It was really good. I wanted to put off starting the third book until after I had read some library books. So um, I'm working on right now. I'll, I'll get to those later. Let's finish talking about the ones that I actually finished. Um, the second one that I finished is The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. This is a nonfiction book about Winston Churchill and his family during World War II. Um, regardless of your opinion of Winston Churchill, I think that he was a great wartime leader, less great in peacetime, but he is an interesting person. So I've been reading, I was reading that on audio because um, I listen to things to fall asleep. And I got fed up with commercial breaks, so I wanted an ebook. And I also really love Eric Larson's books most of the time. I was really surprised because this book only follows about a year, maybe two years at the beginning of World War II. And even though it says that it's about his family, the main focus is, of course, on Winston Churchill because there's 
the most documentation exists about him. And then at the end of the book, it's like, hey, a plot twist. The cool one in this family was actually his daughter, and she did really amazing work. So they didn't go into it in detail in the book, so now I need to look her up and see if I can find a biography of his daughter. <laughs> And the third book that I just finished last night was The Dark Days Club. This is by this is by Allison Goodman, and it is book one in the Lady Helen series. It's set in Regency London, but there's like demons and magic, and should have been right at my alley. And I like the world that she'd created, and I liked the character of Lady Helen. However, she this isn't usually an argument that I make when I'm reading a book, but she had no agency. She made no decisions for herself, despite being like a fiercely independent girl. Um, and it just got really annoying because she always did what other people told her. And if she disagreed with that, then she would just find somebody else who would tell her what to do instead. And she wasn't a problem solver. So... I liked the world. I'm not continuing with the series. I just didn't care for it. Um, I think that it could have been a lot better than what it actually was, unfortunately. So I rated that one two stars. Um, Siege and Storm, I rated four. And Splendid and Vile is like a three, three and a half for me. Um, I really did enjoy it. It was very educational. Um, however, I would have liked to see more about his wife and his daughters and his actual family that were the book was supposed to be about and not just the focus on Churchill himself. So my current reads, um, these are all library books. The first one is Code Girls, which is another World War II story, and it is about the American counterparts to Bletchley Park, which were the code breakers. Um, one group in the army and one group in the navy in the U.S. and the women who broke the codes for Japan and they were working mostly in the Pacific theater. Um, the other one that I'm listening to, another audiobook I got for my job hunt, which is not going great right now. Um, it's How to Win Friends and Influence People on the Digital Age and it is by... Um, not his estate, but like the people who managed Dale Carnegie's like legacy in writing and have control over the copyright of that book. Um, most of my job hunt training so far has been smile more and make more friends, which Anyway, it has some good advice. Most of it just wants, makes me want to bash my head against a wall because I'm an autistic introvert and telling me to smile more is not the way to make me like you in any way. Uh, the last book that I'm reading, I'm hoping to finish today. It is called The Butchering Art and it is by Lindsay Fitzharris. I keep getting her confused with another author. It is nonfiction. It's about Joseph Lister who discovered uh, bacteria and like antiseptic technology methods. Um, basically, he's the reason why we wash our hands. And it was. it's a very good book. It's very interesting. However, I can only read it in small sections because while it is not graphic, in in most cases, there was one that really, really bothered me. Um, she does describe surgical procedures in this book, and I'm quite squeamish. <laughs> so I, I can't read it right before bed. I can't read it when I'm eating, and I tend to read at lunch and when I'm snacking on stuff in the afternoon or right before bed. Those are my main times that I read. Um, 
and every time that I think it's fine and I'll like get my chips and salsa and settle down for an hour of reading, um, then it takes a turn and it took one of those turns the other day and it was bad. Um, I'm just going to warn you if you decide to read this book, very educational. However, when you get to chapter six, The Frog's Legs, where she is discussing experiments that he did on frogs, including dissection, and in a couple cases, vivisection, there is a very nasty scene in this chapter. It's only about a paragraph long, but I thought I was going to throw up and I had to put the book down for the rest of the day. So, um, you have been warned. Um, I, I hit, I hit my line and she crossed it. <laughs> and the only, if this had been any fiction book, I would have stopped reading, but because it is nonfiction, it is something that actually happened and it was not something done for the sake of cruelty. It was something done for the sake of science. And these types of experiments are unfortunately necessary for scientists to learn. Um, unfortunately, tragedies can be highly educational. And that was the case with this one. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to go on about that. That was, that was a lot. So that is what I am reading at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here because I have a cat screaming in the other room. We are already at nearly 45 minutes long on this. So I'm going to have to do a bit of trimming. You're not going to see it. There were several points of me just staring at the camera. But, um, yeah, let's wrap this up here. Um, you can probably tell that I'm having a little bit of trouble finding my thoughts today and just kind of keeping things together and cheerful. It's not been a great mental health week. Um, I'm also in some pain right now. I have an old injury to my neck and shoulder that is due to, um, I'm borderline for hyper, hypermobility. Um, it's not usually a problem for me, but I do have some joints that continually dislocate. Unfortunately, one of them is my neck. Um, so I'm working around that and this week's been a struggle. So, um, before I get too down on everything, um, please make sure to like and to subscribe. Check out all of the links down below because right now my Kofi is my only source of income. I run out of unemployment this week. So anything that you can do to help me out, um, anything that helps me get more engagement with YouTube so that they share my videos with more people is extremely helpful for me right now. And hopefully I won't be a little bit more cheerful and normal in my next video. Um, but don't be surprised if these chatty podcasts get put on hold for a little while. I still want to make regular video content, but sometimes just sitting down and talking to the camera about myself and my day and trying to be chatty and friendly is a little bit beyond me if I don't have a hard and fast script. So... Anyway, I will see you guys next time, and until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you have something cute and fluffy to snuggle up. Ciao!